All right, guys, in this video, you'll witness a deep dive over the shoulder walkthrough as I uncover our proven lead management process using Forefront CRM step by step. So whether you're brand new to real estate or like many of our done for you marketing clients, you've been doing this for years, you'll be armed with the how to to close more deals and scale your business right now, not later, because the name of the game is speed to lead. So take notes. But without further ado, I'm Chris Deal, and we're Real Estate Investing Made Easy, so it's time to make it easy. All right, guys, so this is how quickly and efficiently you guys need to be managing your leads in the CRM. We're gonna take a look at this first one. So this is a mobile home space, right? I just wanna see the additional notes. Right, okay, cool. So we're just going to copy the phone number, boom, we're gonna paste it into the dialer and we're just gonna go. Hello? Hi, is this Bill? Yes, it is. Hi, Bill, this is Chris. I was calling because I believe at some point, not too long ago, you might've been texting with one of my colleagues about your property there in San Marcos on uh, Rancho Santa Fe Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is now a bad time for you to chat? No, I'm actually in Buffalo, New York right now. Oh, <laughs> this nice. is my home. This is my hometown, so I came back here, so I'm going to be here. You want to give me a call in a week or two? I can. Yeah, absolutely. Are you still considering selling that property? I could. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's let's do right. that. I'll reach out to you in about a week or so. Sounds good. All right. All right. Enjoy your Bye. stay in Buffalo. That. It's better than being there Thank in the winter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And we got a good football team. Don't you forget. You know what I, I mean? know. It's about time, right? Yeah. We, because we're still suffering from 13 seconds. When they played Kansas City, there was 13 seconds left, and we were up by a touchdown. Yep. And they win. Uh, unbelievable. Oh, you know? I know. No, I know. Nobody, nobody in the city slept that night. <laughs> oh, I know all about it. I'm, I'm from Philly myself, so I'm an Eagles fan. We finally got our Super Bowl a few years ago, but prior to that, it was just an exercise in waiting and, and patience. <laughs> yes, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. But it's still fun to watch, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. When do you get but back? I've been waiting. Get back uh, uh, next week, probably on Monday or so. Oh, okay. All like, right. Give me, give me a call later, later part of next week. How's that? Awesome. That sounds great. I look forward to talking to you. Good. All right. Talk All to right, you Bill, then. Have a Take good care. week. Oh. See you. Thank you. Bye. Boom. Simple. Easy peasy. Guys considering selling. Talk to Bill and see clearly, you know, when you guys are going through these leads, if you see William, just assume he goes by Bill. If you see Jonathan, just assume he goes by John. The reality is most people do go by those names and they generally use William in a professional manner and they use Bill or John or Tom instead of Thomas with their friends. So if you lead with William, almost always they're going to think you're some professional. They're, they're going to think you're a sales guy, which you are, but like at the end of the day, right, you want to open the door with rapport. So I'm going to take notes here. Uh, he is in Buffalo, New York, his hometown. Bills fan, sounds like an older guy, pleasant attitude. I just want to give myself some basic info so I know what I'm doing when I get back on, on the call with him, right? Could be interested in selling, will be back maybe Monday follow up late next week. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to immediately go over task discovery call. I'm going to put it later part of next week to me is Thursday because midweek is Wednesday and I don't want to wait until Friday to talk to this guy. He could sell the property by then. You never know. So uh, let's go 2 p.m. and we're going to tag that. I'm also going to go ahead and just tag uh, my lead manager, uh, but I'm going to call this guy myself next week since I chatted with them, have the rapport and everything, and then we'll also put this uh, follow-up for next Thursday as well. Save. Uh, so we're going to go second contact. Boom. Uh, now that's done. Actually, we can even delete this uh, discovery call. So we're just going to have a follow-up and we're going to go through and crush that out. I'm on tag red. Uh, cool. Good to go. 
on to the next one. So now that removed from the top, and if we scroll down here, you're gonna see he's gonna be way down in the bottom. Actually, it's not gonna show up until a little bit later, but it'll show up down there later. So now we're gonna go to the next one. So this guy came in, let's copy this number, let's get it in the dialer, and let's go. Anytime it does like this, it just goes and rings and then goes straight to voicemail. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it right back in and dial back and just assume that there's an issue with the phone. Just give it another shot. Hello? Hello, this is Adam. Yes. Hey, Adam. Uh, my name's Chris. I was reaching out. Uh, I think it kind of fell by the wayside at one point, but it looks like you might have been speaking with one of my colleagues via text about a property you own here in San Diego that you might be considering selling. Does that sound about right? Oh, yes. Actually, we're going to hold on to it, but I appreciate your call. Okay. No worries. If anything changes, let us know. Will do. Thanks so much. Yep. Have a great weekend. You as well. Thank you. Bye. Simple. Talk to keeping it for now follow up in future awesome done so now i'm going to put him in an automated follow-up sequence we're going to put him in a 90-day text follow-up and i'm going to change this to me I'm going to switch this over boom create done on to the next one just retag this a little bit Awesome. Now it's off our plate right now. It's out of the manual follow-ups. Now we can go on to the next one. Uh, hung up after Sam's a bad time. All right, cool. So he might do that again. Who cares? Let's keep dialing. Guys, the name of the game is just dial, dial, dial. Just freaking get reps in. If you're not doing this, you're wasting your time. Our call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey Jim, Chris Deal here, uh, reaching out. Uh, it looks like apparently you had spoken, or sorry, texted with one of my colleagues about a property you might own here in San Diego that you might be considering selling. So I wanted to reach out and just connect, learn a little bit more about that property, see if we might be a good fit to work together. So give me a call back when you have a moment. All right, so now I left a message. I'm also gonna shoot him a text. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. We're going to go, actually, gonna delete that. We're going to hit up this one here. We don't call on Sundays, so I'm going to just shift this around a little bit. Uh, perfect. And then I'm going to switch to my number. Boom. Uh, and actually, for this one, again, this guy's name's James, but I'm going to say Jim. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and blast that out. Awesome, left message and text. And save notes and we're gonna go ahead and put this in as next week. So 8.13, we don't wanna go that far out. So we're gonna put it to Tuesday, save, second contact attempt made, boom, done, On to the next one. Now we did get a phone call that came in while we were uh, dialing here. So let's go ahead and see. We obviously want to take a look at that one. So it looks like he's probably leaving a voicemail most likely because the missed call isn't showing up in our, uh, responses yet. So we'll go back in, we'll keep dialing until that comes through. And if it doesn't, then I'll just reach out to him uh, shortly after. So for some reason, this one came back up to the top. Let's go ahead and put this off to, uh, let's see today is, oh, that's why we put it for July. So we're going to go August 11th at 2 p.m. Save that. Boom. Now that goes to the bottom. All right. So now we're going to look at Gata. Gata. She's got a property that we're looking to buy. So let's go ahead on to the next. Guys, this is how easy and quick this can be. You can see how quickly we're just charging through here. Hello, is this Gata? Uh, I was reaching out. I guess you may have been texting with a colleague of mine. Uh, looks like it could have been like a couple weeks ago about a property that you might own in San Diego or El Cajon that you're thinking about selling. Yeah, uh, 
Would you mind giving me a call uh, on Monday, if that's possible? Yeah, absolutely. Do you prefer earlier right. in the day or later in the afternoon? Yeah, probably earlier. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. I can do that. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you very much. Look at this, guys. Like, we're just charging through. These are people that haven't been called in a while, and we're just getting them on the phone. It's so simple. You know, like, the reality is, I guarantee you, if, if you're struggling in your business to, like, close deals, I promise you, there's, there's only one of two things. It's There's never anything else other than these two things. It's either, A, you have a lead flow problem and you're not generating enough leads to get on calls, or two, you're just not actually taking action and getting on the phone with people and you're trying to text people all the time or you're just like analysis paralysis. You keep looking at leads before it even makes sense and not even calling them. Like you gotta get them on the phone, like find out if they're actually interested and talk through it. Like this is what this comes down to. It's not a property business, it's a people business. You can look at properties all day long and it's gonna do you no good. You gotta get on the phone and you gotta talk to people. And if that's not your strong suit, then you need to partner and squad up with somebody that that is their strong suit. So if you need help with that, you can feel free to reach out to us. Like we're happy to help out and get on calls with people. We'll JV and squad up with people and lock up deals for you. And of course, you know, we're going to get paid for our, our time and involvement in the scenario. Uh, but you guys got to step up and make things happen uh, or else these leads are going to fall by the wayside. I mean, we've spent the last, what, 15 minutes and I already called through, had a couple conversations. And if I'm not talking to the camera here, telling you guys what you need to be doing, I'd probably be done in another five or six calls by now. So you guys got to take action here. Let's see earlier in the day. So we're going to save this and then we're not going to put a task for this. We're just going to set a manual uh, next contact and we're going to put this like 9 a.m. And we just need to go through and grind through these. Awesome. So let's go ahead to the next one. So we're going to close out of this one. So that should move him down. All right. And uh, let's see here. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and call this next guy here. Um, you can see how quickly we can just crush through dials. Like this is not rocket science. So we're going to go ahead and hit this one up. Hi, this is Gus. Sorry I missed your call, but please leave me your name and number I and I will get back to you as soon as Gus. possible. See, you Thank you. That? At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, how's it going, Gus? This is uh, Chris. I was reaching out. Uh, I guess apparently you may have been texting or communicating with one of my colleagues. Uh, about a property that you might be considering selling there on uh, Via de F uh, Fel Felicita uh, in Encinitas. So I wanted to chat with you about, about that, learn a little bit more and see if we're a good fit. Uh, give me a call back whenever you get a chance. Hope you're having a good one and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye. Guys, that's a perfect example. I'm looking at his name thinking, yeah, this guy is Gus for sure. And what do you know? His name's Gus, and that's what he said, right? That's what his friends call him, guaranteed. All right, let me answer this call. Flip pilot lead. Hello, this is Chris. Hey, Chris, Roger Wilson out here in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hey, how's it going? Oh, uh, ain't nothing but a party here. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Nice, give me one second. Let me get back to my computer here. Um, let okay, go ahead. Just open up. Uh... Yeah, so your yours is uh, East Traverse, right? Yes. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and it looks like you guys have been uh, just trying to for sale for sale by owner, right, for a while. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what have you been running into? It looks like you guys have had it listed there for for a little while now. Um, have you guys been getting any action on it? No. No. Not, not, not a thing. Got it. We, got were, it. we were work, working on a uh, a deal with another fellow on another piece of property, and but I'm trying to to uh, retire. So I've been doing this 50 years. So I think I know what I'm doing, but you never can tell. Some somebody turn over a new 
pile of dirt and I'm getting done. So oh, I <laughs> hear that. that. I hear that. <laughs> well, congrats on 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 going into retirement. What are you What are you retiring from? Uh, retirement. <laughs> <laughs> You're retiring from retirement. Okay, got it. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, you know, I was uh, subsiding on uh, the rental income from four houses. Well, ten, ten units at one time, and uh, there's only one of me, so there's only four. Not uh, the, 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 get really good service because my my good friend across the street. I'm looking at his house right now. It's sitting in my garage. Uh, he, uh, he he is in the HVAC business, yeah. and he uh, takes care of all my HVA problems. And my next door neighbor, who was just here about ten minutes ago, we were talking about different things. And uh, uh, he is my electrician. So if anybody anything goes wrong, then we just walk across the street and say, "What do you need?" Nice. Is the other neighbor is, good. is the other neighbor next door a plumber too? <laughs> no, he, he's an electrician. Oh man, you got it. You got everybody all tied up there, huh? It's shocking, isn't it? Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's great. You know, you don't find did, that very did, often did, these days. Did you catch that joke? What's that? Oh, shock! It was, it was electrifying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. It's, yeah, I've been on the phone all day today, so sometimes they fly right over my head. <laughs> it, says, it says real estate can't be fun. Exactly. I, I love every day of this business. Well, I am going to introduce you to a, to a friend of mine. Okay. We, we, call, we call her the bar department. And... Uh, so here's she, her name's Sherry, by the way. Her Sherry? Sherry. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. Here she is. Hi, Chris. Otherwise known as his wife of 26, almost 27 years. Oh, nice. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm working on seven years myself. What's the secret? Uh, you have to laugh a lot. How to say okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You sound like you sound like my dad, Roger. He always told me, uh, you know, the famous words you need to know when you get married is, "You're right, dear. I'm sorry." Yep, <laughs> and he's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Awesome. So take heed. <laughs> What's that? I said, take heed. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I got a firecracker for a wife, so you know she doesn't take any crap from me. That's for sure. Well, I'm glad we can connect, guys. Uh, you know, I'd love to learn a little bit more about, you know, this particular property. It sounds like you guys might have a few properties that you're you're looking to sell. Am I wrong about that? Well, this is this is the only one this is the only one that's still on the market right now. Got it. Okay. All right. Did you guys already sell the other ones or, or you just took them down or took, they're just not on market? Right uh, well, we've got, we've got one that's pending and the other one we're not going to sell yet. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Awesome. Well, you know, we buy houses. I mean, we're, we're buying multiple houses every single week. So if anything goes wrong with the one that is pending, uh, feel free to let me know. I, yeah. So I'd be definitely open to taking a look at that one as well. Um, so tell me, like, why are you guys considering selling this one on Travers? Is that your primary or is that that's a rental right now? Right? Oh, no, no, it's, it's a rent. It's a rental. Um, you know, as he said, he's trying to retire. He's trying to retire from the rental um, investment business. He's been retired from a job for 13 years or so. But we had all these rentals and he was taking care of them. But um, he's just one guy and he's not being, he's not able to take care of them like he used to. So, yeah, it's a lot of work. So, we're having to farm out more, you know, actually hire people to do more of the work. So, mm -hmm. we're just trying to go ahead and sell Got it. this one. And it, it is tenant occupied. Okay. And she is actually on Section 8 right now. Oh, okay. And her lease with us does not end until January the 31st of 2023. 
January 31st, 2023. Okay, and I take it she wants to stay for that time? Yes, she does. Okay, got it. Awesome. And uh, what what's the current rent you're getting from her right now? Um, so Section 8 is paying 100% of her rent, and they are uh, paying 976 976 okay got it and nine yeah nine seventy six nine seventy six okay cool so just shy yeah. of a thousand dollars okay right we asked we asked them for eleven hundred and they said nah we're just gonna pay you nine hundred and seventy six and got so it okay we accept because it it's guaranteed so yeah yeah section eight can be great you know you get the right tenant in there section eight and you know it's easy peasy you know sometimes it's uh but yeah it seems like it's a good deal for you guys um sounds like you guys might you know own this outright uh is that correct that's correct okay all right got it got it and um all right well aside from just you know getting tired of of landlording you know what are you guys really hoping to accomplish with the sale of the property well we you know we want to get as much money as we can to put in our retirement account got it okay man i, I that retirement account right now with the way the markets are going i'm sure that's uh could be a point of stress for you huh uh yeah yeah <laughs> i hear that what uh yeah every everybody's hurting in their accounts across the board i've got a lot of friends that are like dumping stuff you know even it's crazy even the crypto i don't know if you guys deal much in the crypto but all of it is just you know tanking pretty pretty heavily so yeah um all right and uh so you want 140 for it looks like it's been on on market for about 58 days uh, i'm curious why do you think it hasn't sold at this point because all we get are the flippers who only want to offer a 70 or 80 percent of the value yeah yep oh yeah i know all about that <laughs> got it okay and, that's, and that is that is the only people i mean they're coming in with some really low numbers yeah you know oh you know all cash we can close in five days well we don't want to close in five days because we have a tenant there yep um you know, all cash is nice. We don't care how you get the cash. Yeah. You know, you can you can get a mortgage. You can, you know, get an inheritance, you know, whatever. Just bring it to the table. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but they've just been so low ball. It's just not even funny. Yeah. No, I totally understand, you know, and, and, and that's how we buy houses sometimes as well. You know, we buy houses two different ways. So one is you know cash uh like that where you know we come in and what do we need to do to the property to bring it up to its you know high-end value and then you know of course we got to put that money into it and then there's got to be a return and you know we've we have investors that are funding the deals and so we're paying them a percentage on on the deal so so a lot of times you know with the flippers you know that's how they have to underwrite the deal but for you know people like yourselves like that type of transaction doesn't really make sense so either a you got to find an end buyer which is going to be a challenge because they're going to want to get the tenant out uh, or B you got to find a, a landlord buyer that just wants to take it and just keep it long term um, so the the other way that we buy houses is on terms and you know I know I read through the agreement that you guys had and I'm not necessarily opposed to anything in there. Um, I, I was just curious because you, you guys specifically mentioned in there that you guys are not open to sell or carry on anything. I'm curious as to That's why, correct. you know, what's what's the main holdup with that? Just curious. We we don't we don't want to be a bank. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, we just don't, we, we don't want to be the bank. We just want to sell it outright and, you know, then it becomes somebody else's problem. Got it. Okay. So if there was a way for it to become someone else's problem and, and you guys could get, you know, more of a return, because from the sounds of it, you guys are going to take that and then throw it into your retirement account, which, you know, as we know, is not doing great right now. So if there was a way for you guys to get even more than you're asking and, and have a guaranteed income coming in, I mean, is there, aside from just being a bank, if we could make it where it was like, hey, there's there's not really... You know, there's a lot of security for you. 
what would be the challenge? Yeah, no, we, we just, yeah, we, we just don't, we don't want to do it. We don't want to do any kind of solid financing. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, what do you think needs to be done to the property to bring it up to tip top shape? Well, let's see. We put a we put a roof on back in what 2016. We bought it in about 2014. It had already been flipped, so the kitchen had brand new counters and cabinets and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we put some new carpet in it back in January. We got a new um, microwave for over the over the range in January, we got, we had all of the sink faucets in the one and a half bath, or in the one and a half baths, and also the kitchen replaced. So those are all nice and new. Uh, it's got a, a detached garage and two storage sheds. Got it, okay. And then we've got some brand new vinyl that we are going to be installing into the uh, kitchen so got it okay new vinyl in the kitchen um okay after you guys do that i mean is there anything else that would would prevent it from selling from for top dollar no got it okay all right and i'm just curious you know is is there a particular reason you chose to go for sale by owner and not use a traditional uh agent to list it because Roger's a real estate broker retired. Oh, okay. Got it. Yeah, so he knows all the, the, the whole deal with that. Okay. Got it. Well, um, yeah, so, I mean, I'd have, I'll would i have to run some numbers. I don't know, you know, I, I don't want to insult you with a cash offer because, quite honestly, like, for us to be able to make any type of money on it, you know, it, we would have to be lower than what you guys would, would want for it. Um, and, yep. I, and it just, that just doesn't make sense for your guys situation. Um, it's a shame you guys aren't open to some sort of seller carry. Um, cause I think we could definitely make you, we could probably even offer you more than, than what you want for it. If we were able to do some sort of terms, you know, and, and we can typically like most of the clients we work with in those scenarios, we're typically doing like a five year balloon or seven year balloon. Um, yeah, you know, with... no, that's, no, uh, it, it just doesn't work for us. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right, gotcha. Um, well, I might not be your buyer, but let me ask you this. Um, I have a pretty vast network um, across the U.S. and might be able to find the right buyer for you guys. Um, would you guys be open to, to partnering with me on this to try to get you guys the right end buyer? Yeah, it would just depend on the terms. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me see. Cause, um, what we can do a lot of times. So one of the things that we've done in scenarios is we work with what we kind of coined the term penalty box buyers. Uh, so buyers that wouldn't otherwise qualify for like a normal, uh, a normal mortgage on a property, um, and, and get it to them. So there might be a way we could possibly, you know, connect you with the right end buyer that is looking for this for either like a long term buy and hold just the way it is. And they're looking to just write off the depreciation or, you know, or find one of these penalty box buyers or um, find an end buyer. But again, finding an end buyer that's looking to, you know, occupy the property, then that obviously creates challenges with the tenant in place. So. Um, so yeah, let me take a look. I'll, I'll run some numbers and, you know, see if there's anything that we can do that makes sense. But, you know, let me just ask you this. I know, I know this is not going to go anywhere, so I don't want, you know, like, but let's just do a thought experiment, right? Like if there was a world in which you guys were like, man, you know, if I could get this interest rate and this amount of money up front, like what would that perfect scenario look like? I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you're saying. Like, you know, again, I know you guys are not interested in doing a seller carry, right? 
But if you right. were, if you were, what would a perfect scenario look like? If you could choose, pick your interest rate, pick your monthly payment, pick your down payment, where it made sense it, for it, everybody. Yeah, that is. There, there. That's just an irrelevant question because we're never going to consider that. Got it. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Well, let me. Yeah, let me take a look. I'll see if there's anything that makes sense on our end. Um, you know, the biggest thing for us, you know, we look at most of the properties that we're working with, you know, we're typically doing anywhere from like five to 10% down. And so when we look at, you know, how much money we'd have to come to the table on this and then cash flow, I mean, it would take us, you know, if we're giving you guys 140 divided by 976, uh, I mean, it would take us 12 years just to get our money back on this. So it wouldn't really, it wouldn't really turn into, it wouldn't be profitable until we hit 12 years, really. Um, so, you know, it makes it challenging in that type of scenario. Um, so I think really the buyer that you guys are looking for is somebody that's going to buy it to move into. But again, you have the challenge with the tenant, uh, the lease in place till January. Just out of curiosity, I mean, if, if you don't find a buyer between now and January, what are your guys' plans at that point? Probably just keep it. Got it. Okay. All right. So, interesting. So, again, I'm not, you know, I just want to understand the big picture, right? Because if the goal is to get out of like the the downsides of being a landlord right you know and the management and the expenses and everything but there's a world in which you would keep it and keep the cash flow coming in um i'm just trying to wrap my head around well i mean we can always put it back on the market for sure you know we can put it on the market anytime we want we're not in a rush to sell it got it we could sell it tomorrow we could sell it next month we could sell it next year it just doesn't matter we're not trying to get fast cash or anything like that yeah so, got it okay so if we have to keep it for another few months or whatever so be it we still get income yeah yeah sure okay all right well what, what do you think it could rent for like if let's say the tenant vacated you know january 31st and like the based on the other rents and you know you just did a traditional long-term rental what do you think 12, guys 1200 1200 okay 1200 for the neighborhood yeah got it okay okay well yeah i don't know that it makes sense for us but i will take a look i'll have the team run some numbers we'll do a little bit of due diligence see if there's anything that we could make work um you know, and then in the meantime, you know, like I said, I mean, if you guys do change your mind regarding, you know, some sort of, you know, seller carry. And again, you know, I, I don't make the terms, you know, I don't go to Chase and tell them what the terms I want from them. I, you know, the, the bank tells me what terms they want. So if you guys think about it and you're like, you know what, we just don't want to manage it. We don't want to deal with the repairs and everything else. And, you know, we might consider something, you know, just let me know what those terms might look like. And, you know, and then I can, you know, plug them in and see if it makes sense for us. Um, but I'll run, I'll run numbers from a cash offer standpoint. I just don't think you guys are going to be thrilled with the type of number we would come at with a, a cash number. So. Yeah. I'm sure we wouldn't be. Yeah. So, um, do you guys know of anybody else that's looking to sell any properties in the area? Mm, no. Okay. All right. Well, we, you know, we're buying properties. I'm looking to buy four properties in Indianapolis this next week. So uh, if you guys know of anybody and you refer them to us uh, and we end up closing, uh, we do pay a $500 referral fee for any properties that we close on. So uh, be happy to, to connect with anybody you guys know and, and help you guys out any way we okay. can. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Well, it was a pleasure Good. chatting with you guys. You. Hopefully it wasn't a complete you waste of your time. time yeah, no worries. Hopefully it wasn't a complete waste of your time. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, Sherry. Have a good one, you guys.
All right, so, you know, we go through those details with the clients and, you know, see what they can come up with. But, you know, as you guys can tell, right, like this particular client, they were definitely opposed to seller finance, you know, but you got to dig in and ask the questions, right? So, you know, she said they're opposed to seller finance. Um, but then when asked, you know, what if they don't sell the property? What are their plans? Well, they're going to keep it and continue renting it out, right? So there's some sort of misalignment and you got to plant those seeds. Again, if you guys think that these are going to be one call closes and you're going to just lock these up, you know, on the first call for a creative financing structure, you're out of your mind. Like sure, it might happen and it, it can happen from time to time. But the bulk of these scenarios, they have to get to that point, right? You have to just keep pushing them closer and closer to the edge until they're really ready for that, right? This property has been on market for 58 days. They've been trying to sell it for 58 days at 140,000. They've gotten all these low ball offers, right? Time changes circumstance, right? We ask, you know, and you wanna find out like, what are they hoping to accomplish? If somebody tells you, I'm just trying to get the money, right? And you don't ask a follow-up question to that, you're not doing your job, right? Money is simply a vehicle. You can't eat money. You can't sleep on money. You can't breathe money. Like you, money is just a vehicle to accomplish a goal, right? And their goal is to fund their retirement account. And so you notice I slid in there, got it. Okay, how are those retirement accounts doing right now with the way the market is? Yeah, not great. Got it. So you're not seeing a great return right now. Interesting. Okay. Well, what if we could create a way where you could see a better return and you can get out from under this rental that you're tired of managing, right? You know, you start to ask these questions and they might not say, yes, I'm ready to do this now, but I'm going to put this person in a follow-up, right? An automated follow-up sequence. We'll stay in touch with them. The fortune is in the follow-up. Again, if you think you're going to close these people the first time you talk to them, you're out of your freaking minds, right? We need to stay in front of this person. So I'm going to put all the notes in here. We're going to, you know, tee this up for later. We'll put it in a long-term follow or short-term follow-up, you know, probably, uh, you know, 60 to 90 days. And the system, and this is why I love Forefront CRM, because we've built out sequences in here where the text messages are going to go automatically out uh, without me having to do anything. And they look like it's coming from a real person and they're going to respond and, you know, we'll stay in touch with them and go from there. So so we'll get this one dialed up and, and ready to go. All right, so let's dig back in here. Uh, we've got, I think, eight more here that are a little bit behind. So we're gonna jump in and uh, make some more calls. So let's see here. <laughs> Please leave your message. Hi, this message is for Seville. This is Chris Deal with Lazarus Property Group. I was reaching out. I believe you were texting with a colleague of mine. Might've been a couple weeks ago now uh, about a property that you own in Oceanside on Conyer Court. Uh, wanted to see if that was something you're still considering selling or uh, sounded like you might not be considering selling. So I uh, just wanted to clarify that and you know make sure we're not bugging you uh, if you're not really interested in selling. So give me a call back whenever you get a chance. Okay, so we're also going to create a new snippet here. I'm gonna pause this and we'll come back and I won't have to edit this snippet here moving forward. All right, guys, now we're back at it. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to the next one here. Um, and let's just double check these notes, blah, blah, blah. This business man, buy, fix and sell. And treat, wait, treat her. Okay, so let's just go ahead and call this guy up. Hello, and thanks for calling. I'm unavailable to take your call at this time, but if you leave your name, number, and a brief message, I'll return your call as soon as possible. Thank you, and have a very blessed day. Hey Marvin, this is Chris Deal with Lazarus Property Group. I was reaching out. Uh, looks like you may have been texting with one of my colleagues. Uh, they have reached out about a couple properties that you might own. Looks like you're, you're doing some fix and flips. So um, doesn't look like those would be 
good options for us. Uh, you know, we're basically in the same business, but wanted to connect with you and just see what type of properties you typically look for and see if we can possibly bring some deals your way. Um, we're doing a lot of deals in Indy. We work all over the country. So I uh, just wanted to learn more about what you're looking for uh, in the properties you pick up and see if we can uh, possibly do some business together. So give me a call back when you get a chance. Hope you're having a good one and I look forward to talking to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, now in this situation, I can go down and I can see in the text chain that, you know, this guy's saying that the properties he has are both 10 out of 10. He says he's a fix and flipper. That's what he does for business, right? So why am I going to try to get in there and have a discussion about buying those properties? I'm not going to buy those properties unless, of course, I can cash flow them, which is probably not going to be the case. It's it's not going to make sense. I'm not going to be able to get in. You know, my entry fee is going to be too high and uh, it's just going to take me too much time to get the money back uh, and right now we're not buying properties just simply for appreciation uh, or, or you know writing off depreciation I mean the other thing um, now one thing to consider is this property has been on market for 131 days so he may be feeling the pinch a little bit and might want to give a little bit of a discount but you know it's probably still gonna take him a bit of time before he really drops this to where it really needs to be uh, but he can be a buyer for us, right? So if we have properties that we're looking to wholesale, this guy could absolutely be a buyer. He's got two properties right now. What do you think he's gonna do when he sells these? He's gonna look for another one and try to try to flip these ones. So um, yeah, so other than that, um, we're gonna go on to the next one and uh, keep it moving. So let's go ahead and shoot him a text. All right, so for this one, we just modified that text a little bit just to tell him like, hey Marvin, this is Chris, just left you a voicemail about possibly bringing some deals your way. Is now a good time to chat or is next week better? So um, obviously if this guy likes making money, then he's gonna see the opportunity and uh, we can go ahead and, and connect with him. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end this tasks. We'll put this on the calendar to follow up next Tuesday. Uh, we'll leave it there and then uh, we'll just go from there. So uh, let's see, on to the next one. So let's check this one out here. Let's go ahead and call all of these ones and uh, see what we got here. This one looks like an Indiana lead. So uh, we'll go ahead in and pop that in and see what the deal is. Actually, let me just double check, see if... Uh, your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice. Voicemail, so let's go ahead and call. Hello. Hi, is this Benny? Are you speaking? Uh, this is Chris. I was reaching out. I believe you were texting with a colleague of mine, RJ, about a property you own on Sycamore. I think it's Sycamore Court that you might be thinking about selling. Does that sound familiar? I have an offer. Got it. Okay. Awesome. I uh, just accepted an offer this morning. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. When are you guys scheduled to close? September 19th. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, um, you know, I'd love to be a backup if uh, anything goes wrong and that doesn't end up working out for you. Um, you mind saving my number? And if it doesn't work out for you, if, you know, give me a call and happy to talk. Okay. Are you an investor or? Yeah, we buy homes for a few different reasons. Sometimes we're, you know, fixing them and flipping them, but a lot of times we're looking for buy and holds, long term rentals, things like that. So, corporate housing, all different types of things. Yep. All right. I'll give you a call if this falls through. Awesome. Got any other properties you're thinking about selling? No. Okay. All right, cool. Well, yeah, if that one falls through, give me a shout and um, we'll be happy to talk with you about it and see what we can do. Otherwise, good luck with the sale. Hopefully everything goes smoothly and uh, you get, get everything squared away. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Benny. Have a good weekend. Bye. All right. Accepted an offer this morning. Scheduled to close September... 19th so what we're gonna do so guys in this type of scenario you never want to just throw this lead away and debt it like September 19th so much can happen between now and September 19th a freaking you know the guy who's buying it could get 
blasted by a truck crossing the street and you know do you think he's going to be able to sign closing docs at that time i mean there's a million different things that can happen so i'm going to put this guy in a follow-up uh to see if if it's closed escrow and if it hasn't I want to be the first person this guy thinks about. I want this guy to not be able to forget who I am between now and when he closes uh, or when he's scheduled to close, because if that falls apart, who do you think he's going to call? If he, if this is the last time I've reached out to him, he is not going to remember me between now and September 19th. Let's say September 15th, this deal falls apart. He's not going to remember who I am. And I guarantee you, he's not saving my phone number in there because he's like, ah, oh, I accepted an offer. It's good to go. He's thinking the exact same thing that 90% of you guys that are watching this are thinking like, oh, that's, that's off the table. So uh, I'm just going to move on and dead this lead. But I can't tell you how many times I enter into negotiations and get properties under contract where it was under contract already and it fell apart. So if you're not putting these types of calls and these types of leads into follow-ups, you're absolutely missing the boat. Wasn't that awesome, guys? Now, remember the three key takeaways we discussed in this video. Number one, the fortune is in the follow-up. And we just shared the how-to, so let us know if you got value from that and leave any questions you have in the comments below. Number two, take action. Always remember that the name of the game is speed to lead. So the more reps you get in, the more confidence you'll have, and that confidence will help you close more deals. And number three, if you're looking to improve your lead management, let's connect. Click the link in the description titled Lead Management Acceleration, and we'll provide a free strategy session and talk about this one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, and here's a sneak peek into how we train our own acquisitions team and our done-for-you marketing clients to close more deals in this training series on lead management, where our very own Brad Garcia shows you how to crush the setter role. So get ready to take more notes and scale your business in this next video. Thank you.